Greetings, my name is John Gabriel, and this is the new Calculus channel. So once again, um, I'm able to chat to you about a topic that a lot of students have problems with, and rightly so. It's the subject of bijective cardinality. Now, George Cantor is the father of all mathematical cranks, and he was the one who came up with this idea. It's actually a pretty useless idea, and this is what I'm going to discuss now in this video with you. So let's begin. Right. Now, what did George Cantor say? He said that given any two sets, A and B, they are equinumerous if there exists a one-to-one -one correspondence between their elements. In simple words, what that means is that any set that can be indexed is called countable. And which is the best candidate to begin with? Naturally, it's a set of natural numbers, right? Because every natural number can be given a unique name using any radix system right so uh, if you have for example and let's do this quickly if you have uh, uh, a radix system tens units hundreds etc like that right and you can start off with one two three and so on and this here is the name of each of the elements one two etc and it will all be unique right so um, the set of natural numbers <coughs> is the set that uh, would be the best candidate, right? So, let's just get rid of these, delete these, right. And uh, in order to even begin to talk about equinumerosity, it is imperative that the elements of both sets be both distinct which means they're going to be well-defined, right? And well-defined. In other words, all of them have a name, a unique name, and are easily to identify, okay? So elements of a countable set must be listed systematically. That also means that in order for a set to be called countable, it must be possible to systematically name all of its elements. So without any further ado, the set of natural numbers is such a set, and it is used to index other sets, like the rational numbers, for example. That's why the set of rational numbers, using the Cantor pairing function, can be shown to be indexable, right? In other words, there's uh, an index from the natural numbers into the rational numbers. Of course... <laughs> That's really quite silly because the natural numbers are rational numbers, just a special kind of rational number. All right, so now how did all these ideas come about and what is the main support behind this gibberish? Let's see. So, first of all, a line does not consist of points, contrary to what you've heard all your life. And you should be listening very carefully, especially if you're a professor of mathematics, because you're usually the most ignorant. A line is a distance between two points, okay? Distance does not consist of points. A point is like a sign or a flag alongside a path or a given line. So, for example, if you look at this blue path here, uh, this flag here is a point, okay? So you start off at zero. The length of both the, the blue and the red lines are zero. And as you move along, this serves as a flag. This point is not part of the line or the road, just as a road sign is not part of a road, okay? The dotted blue line, this one that you see here, is always longer than the dotted red line which obviously does not contain all the distances on the dotted blue line. So this line here does not contain all the distances on the dotted blue line. The signs appear to be equinumerous, meaning that the flags or the markers on this smaller circle are the same as the markers on this circle. Well, that's no surprise because uh, 
for any given circle, an angle contains the same amount of radiance, right? And a ray, such as this dotted black ray here, will traverse all of them in exactly the same way. So this attribute is the same for any side circle. It doesn't mean that this red path here has the same number of points. You cannot count points, okay? You know why you can't count points? Because they're not uh, well-defined in the case of any geometric object except the point itself, right? In other words, to reify a point, you need to be able to give it uh, two or three attributes, two attributes in a plane and three attributes in space, right? An X and Y coordinate or an X, Y, Z. That's how you reify a point. Now, you cannot reify all the distances on either of these lines, okay? So, mathematicians or cranks in the mainstream use this to, to deceive their students. In other words, to make them think that this little red arc is equinumerous to the blue arc. Well, it's not equinumerous because if we go right to the end here, it's not equinumerous in terms of distance. This distance here is 4.54 and this is 2.5, 2.49. So any distance greater than 2.5, greater than 2.49 and less than 4.54 is not on this little red line, okay? They both start at zero, but the arc as well as the radius of each circle influence the scaling factor from this little arc to the bigger arc and that's all bijective cardinality is about it's really a scaling of one distance to another right so um, the signs appear to be equinor equinor equinumerous but the distances are not okay the distances are not because the greatest distance on this arc is 2.49 and the greatest distance on this arc is 4.54. And of course, not all, not by any stretch of the imagination can all the points on these uh, arcs be identified as distinct or be called well-defined because there are many number, there are many magnitudes or distances that have no measure. The ancient Greeks called those incommensurable magnitudes. So for those of you wondering what's happening down here, I'm just showing you that the measure of an angle is the length of an arc over the radius, okay? And it's the same in both the case of the smaller circle and the bigger circle. This is how you measure in radians, okay? You take the length of the arc and you divide it by the radius. So naturally, this little circle has exactly the same uh, amount of flags, but these flags are not points unless they can be reified, okay? Reified. In other words, you can create an instance in terms of a coordinate, either along a line or in a plane or in three dimensions. And that's something that uh, no one I've ever met in my life was able to understand, okay? So, to summarize, points have no extent. So how can a line consist of nothing? Okay, that's not the essence or the main attribute of a line. The main attribute of a line is that it is a distance, okay? And if it's a straight line, it is the shortest distance between any two given points, right? So th those are the most important things to remember. Now, George Cantor ended up in a mental asylum. Um, but when he thought about these things initially, he was sane and in his right mind. He was coherent. So while it's interesting to note that the set of natural numbers can be listed or named systematically, it's not particularly useful. Okay, And I don't know of a single instance where bijective cardinality has been used uh, practically or even usefully in any STEM field. It's complete rot, and students are forced to learn a lot of theory with respect to this garbage in a course uh, in mathematics, okay? So you'll get uh, different levels of infinities. So, for example, this blue line has uh, uh, the same infinity as this line, even though they're different lengths, okay? And it turns out uh, an interesting question might be uh, if equinumerosity is just a mapping, well, 
a straight line will always map a point on itself to another point on itself, right? So this light blue line will always map to the one that's on the circumference of the circle. So it doesn't matter how many circles you have here. And then the question is, is the center uh, of the same uh, bijective cardinality as these arcs? Obviously not, because the center is clearly one point. So uh, now somebody might turn around and say, well, we're talking about uh, a whole length. It doesn't really matter because a length or a line or a distance does not consist of points. So you can't count points. The mythical object you're taught, called the real number line, is, for all intents and purposes, absolute garbage. You cannot reify a real number line because there is no such thing as a real number. The only numbers that we have are the rational numbers. So... I'm really out of breath now. I'm going to leave you with that. This is a new calculus channel. Um, don't waste your time in this rut. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And I'll try to be chatting with you again soon about another interesting topic. But I think it's very useful to refresh this knowledge every once in a while. And that's what I'll do. I'm John Gabriel. Till next time, goodbye.